do some build up the thorax. Up and down. Thorax shape again should be a nice uh, egg type shape. Any fibres going fob the just pull them back and do a turn of thread just to lock them out of the road. So we check to see it's sitting okay. Yep. Now, as I said, the optional material is the jungle cork. And you need two small eyes. And there we go. Two obviously the same size. So what I do is line both the eyes up. Just like that. Hold what material I want to be on the fly in my finger and thumb. And pull back what I don't want. Just pull it out of the road. Just check that they're lined up again. Make sure they're okay. That's fine. Now let's just simply offer it one either side of the fly. Just make sure you do it right before you start to tie them in. There you go. Hold it nice and tight. Pinch and loop. At this point, three or four turns just to hold. Right, one's sitting up a wee bit. All we have to do is just simply bring it down. Encourage it to where you want it to sit. Just hold it. And come in my nice two or three tight turns and that encourage the material to sit where you want. Now I tuck these fibres back, I tuck them in and just simply all you have to do is pull the back out of the road, bring the thread right over the top. Without using scissors you can actually break these off. One. Maybe one doesn't want to break off. Just keep going. If it's not going to break off there, just keep a hold of the thread. Trim away the rest. And then you want your cock cackle, dye black. Just simply pull away the underfoot out the road. It's the good side or the shiny side facing yourself. Hold it to the side of the hook. One, two, three, four. Trim away the waist. Now I fold the hackle. And I like to do it on the fly itself. Well, some people fold hackles off the fly, but I find it's much easier. And all you do is bring it through your finger and thumb, like that. There you go. Nothing easier than that. And then it's not much more than two turns. So there's one, two turns of hackle. Just simply bring it across the thread, bring the thread up on the top, tie these in. Okay, take the hackle pliers off, keep the pressure on the thread. Now what I do again, again, I tuck these back, pull everything back away from the eye, make sure everything's out the road, and then bring in your thread, tying these down. Now keep the pressure on the thread, it's important that you do that. This thread especially is very springy and it'll pull back slightly like an elastic band, so just keep a hold of it. And then what finish. Trim away the thread. Trim away the hackle point. And then get your varnish again with the brush. Just varnish the eye. Right over the top. You've got a lot of control over how much varnish you put on with the V brush. And don't worry if you fill the eye. As I said, get your dubbing needle. Simply clean out the eye. This will save you doing it on the bank when you're fishing. And there we are. That's a duck fly. For my next fly, I'm going to be tying the clink hammer. Uh, it's a very important fly, especially if you want a fly to represent the emergence stage of the buzzer. And uh, the materials I'm going to be using is, uh, this is a saddle cape, cock cape, it's a green mose. Uh, the dubbin, it's going to be his rear dubbin. And uh, there we are. And the rib is going to be crystal flash. Uh, an excellent material, can be used in wings as well as being used as a rib in this case. And uh, hook, I'm going to be using quite a heavy hook. Now if you're going to it's a Camasan B110, it's a heavy side, and there's a lighter version of the same hook. If you're going to cast a fly out there and hope 
like it's going to sit there all day, that you want the lighter hook. But for the heavier hook, or for casting to fish that are you're covering a rising fish, I feel that the heavy hook corrects the fly, it's in the right position straight away. So this is why I would recommend the 110. And uh, a thread, the thread's going to be a uni thread, 8 quite a fine hook, uh, thread, sorry. And uh, it's just as usual, start at the eye of the hook, layer a thread, length of the thorax, trim away the waist. Now that's your measurement for your length of your thorax. Now what you do to form the wing of the clink camera, you just bring the thread back halfway to this point there. And you get your antron rule. This is going to represent your wing and the post for your, your hackle. You simply bring it to the underside of the hook, hold it, finger thumb, nice and tight, two or three turns on that side, a couple of turns on that, and then you want to post the wing just to secure it just now. Take away the excess, take out the road. Now you're going to post the hackle and the wing together. Just take away what you don't need, simply break it off. Get the hackle in. Get it sitting right. Now one turn at the back just to hold it. And then the thread round again. And then start to bring the thread right up the wing, posting the hackle and the wing together at the same time. And then come back down. Bring the thread at the back, secure in the point of the hackle, trim away the waist. Now your rib is a crystal flash. This is single strand when pulled out and then doubled. And just simply offer it to the side of the hook, pull it into that turn of thread, and then wind down all the way around the bend. Doesn't have to be touching turns at that point there. And then get your dubbing, your hair's ear dubbing. There we are. Just take off what you need. Again, like I did before, just roll it on your finger and thumb, displace the fibres to end up with a small lump or a ball of, in this case, hair's ear. Just offer it to the thread. Nice and fine. Spread it out. To that point there. And then you simply slide it up to the hook. The thread up. First turn to secure it in, you can tighten it up at this point simply by just twisting the dubbing on the thread and then wind up forming your body all the way up to the beginning of the thorax to that point there. And then bring your rib up through a good five, six turns all the way up, keep going to get this point, bring it across your thread and secure it in and then trim away the waste. Again back to our dubbing, just a small pinch of dubbing. And roll it again into your fingers, off it to the thread. It's going to form your thorax and just tidy up this part here and about your wing. Just simply wind right down to the wing itself, come in front Nice and tight. There we go. And just have a check. See, it looks, looks fine. Looks good. And then into actually winding the hackle on. Now you just simply start winding round at the top. Oops. Roll one. The next turn should be underneath that turn there. And the next one. And the next one. Keep going. Until we get enough hackle in there to float the fly. And at this point, when you're happy with it, again, have a quick look. Just pull everything back out of the road, except the hackle point. Keep it forward of the eye. Now you're going to use these two fingers here. You simply bring these over and hold the hackle for a second and bring the thread up, locking that in. Secure in that hackle. Still keeping a hold of the wing and the hackle out of the road. Then bring this back and you tuck it in. Again, pull everything back and then bring the thread up. Tying in your hackle. Keep the pressure on the thread. Forget everything just now. Come in with your whip finisher. And then whip finish this in. Tie it off.
going to be the thread your hackle pull everything back just check it's laying right just have a look that's fine that's fine just pull this back now I usually trim it right in line with the bend of the hook there the length of your wing trim it there that's your cling hammer now all you've got to do now is just varnish the head Again, okay, pull the material out the road get in there with the brush Varnish the, the head. Don't worry about it, I said earlier on. Just if you fill the eye up full of varnish, just get in with your dubbing needle, clean it out, just leave it for a second. And that's you. And that's your clean camera. For my final fly, I'm going to be trying a claret hopper, uh, a dry fly representing the buzzer. And uh, it's a very popular colour, it does really well. It's one of those colours that I would recommend uh, you'd have in your box. And the materials I'm going to be using is a Chinese cape dyed claret. Uh, pheasant tail, again, dyed the claret. The rib's going to be a red holographic rib. This is a medium tinsel. Uh, body material, claret again. And my thread is a Danvos 6 0, and it's a nice claret as well. The hook is going to be a Camasan B160, which is a short shank, wide gape, it's a medium wire hook. Uh, it's ideal for dry flies and it's quite strong. Now, I'm going to, as usual, start at the eye of the hook. Just put a layer of thread right down, all the way, it's in line with the barb, there. Just simply trim away the waist. At this point, I tie in my, my rib, my holographic tinsel. Just at that point there, a couple of turns, just to secure, just lie it back out the road. And then, once I'm dubbing, I want to try and keep the body quite fine. Don't want it too heavy. And I want the, the rib especially to actually sit into the material, into the seals for. Again, just like I did before, just roll it into your finger and thumb. And dub it on. You see, it does run very easy. Just slide it up. Get that one turn in to lock it. And then just tighten up as you go, twisting the dubbing onto the thread. Stops it flying off. Just keep doing that all the way up to that point there. And then bring your rib up through. And once, twice, three, four times. Bring it in front of the thread. Secure it in and trim away the waste. Now I like to use at this point a bit of Velcro, which is on a lollipop stick. Sticky back stuff, you can buy it in any of the shops, dressmaking shops. You just simply make sure the thread's out the road. If you're on that side, just rough it up. Again, bring the thread out the road, underneath, and just pull it back. And now, I prepared the legs, pulled them off the pheasant tail, and then put a single knot, which will give an impression of the legs. And I like to actually spread them out before I tie them in. There are six there. I'll not count them, the fish will not. It's up to yourself how many you want to put in. Uh, but six is the average. Line them up, get them sitting where you want before you tie them in. There you go. So bring your finger and thumb in, hold them. Pinch and loop, two or three thumbs just to secure them on the top. I prefer, as I say, I prefer them on the top on the underside, and then I just bring up the waist, trim them away, and before I do anything else, bring these ends in, and then come back up. Now I've got a feather already off the cape, just simply take away what you don't need, just offer it to the side, tie it down, 
all the way right to the eye. Bring it up and trim. Now you get your hackle pliers. Just put it onto the hackle. Now you can wind it straight away, right onto the top of your thread. Just encouraging the fibres to stay up. Don't pull them back too much. If you can pull back any fibres going forward with the eye, you're stroking it back with your finger and thumb, and then do a turn. And you keep going right to the eye, to that point there. And then you simply bring it across your thread. Bring your thread up, keeping the pressure onto the hackle pliers. A good three or four turns. And like I did before, just let that go. Anything going forward and I pull it back. Now I'm going to tuck in the hackle with the thread. Secure it back out of the road. Keep the thread tight, don't let it go to tie off. One, two, three. Take the thread away. Point the hackle away. And all we have to do then is just to balance the, the head of the fly, again, using the brush, all the way around. Clean out the eye. Just keep going till it's clear. There we go. And that's the claret hopper. Many thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope the six patterns that I've tied in the video help you tie the different stages of the buzzer right through from the bloodworm to the, the hopper, which is a dry fly. And the tying tips in the video should help you tie a needle fly. Many thanks.